Hello friend, welcome to Zuzucorn's complete ammo guide. Today in our second installment, we'll be covering bullets, how to get them and whether they're worth using or not. This video aims to showcase the pros and cons of each bullet, but whether you want to use them or not ultimately depends on you, so play the game in the way that you want. I'm Zuzucorn and I aim to entertain you, encourage you and offer you a place to call home, so subscribe now and join the Zuzucorn family. Let's begin. Bullets are generally not as accessible super early as compared to arrows. Bows and arrows can be made right off the bat, while guns are a little bit further into the game. The first gun that most people encounter is from the first Shadow Orb or Crimson Heart that you break, which will yield the Musket or the Undertaker respectively. This is also where you find your first type of bullet, the Musket Ball. Shadow Orbs and Crimson Hearts will drop 100 of these when you get a gun. Musket balls are essentially the equivalent of wooden arrows, so they're the basic ammunition for guns and are used as crafting materials for better bullets. After getting your first gun, the arms dealer also moves in, and this is where you can get more musket balls. The arms dealer sells these for a rather acceptable price, which isn't too expensive, but isn't too cheap really early as well. I don't think musket balls are that great, but for the most part, better options are not really accessible this early. Despite this, musket balls are actually pretty decent throughout the entire game, since your damage output mostly depends on the gun itself. So honestly, musket balls aren't that bad, although they are just plain and don't have any special effects. So to recap, musket balls are the most basic bullet, and you can buy more from the arms dealer. Next, we have the first bullet upgrade, the silver or tungsten bullet. These can be crafted using the respective bar and some musket balls, and they offer very minimal damage increases. They can also be purchased from the arms dealer directly during a blood moon. These are just a slight upgrade to the musket ball and are honestly not that worth it. They are extremely mediocre, but if you're after a bullet upgrade, you don't have any other choice this early. The next bullet is locked behind beating the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu, so if you're having trouble with those and want some extra firepower, these are all you have. Actually, a mini shark and musket balls are enough to beat those bosses, but if you're on master mode or something, then the extra bit of damage from tungsten bullets might help a little. Interestingly though, the silver bullet doesn't do bonus damage to werewolves according to legends and myths. It's just a little fun fact thrown in there for ya. So overall, I don't think it's worth getting tungsten or silver bullets, but if you want to, buying tons of them from the arms dealer is probably the more convenient option, if you happen to come across a blood moon that is. With the Reign of Cthulhu or Eater of Worlds defeated, we now have access to the Meteor, a wonderful event that has a chance of occurring every night. Usually, a Meteor will fall soon after you defeat the boss, and finding it is the bigger problem actually. But as a general guide, meteors are more likely to fall away from the center of the world, so just head to the ocean and hope for the best. If you saw the meteor message but can't find it anywhere around the world, try looking into your corruption crevices. Sometimes meteors fall into those if you're unlucky. Or lucky maybe. It's a glass half full, half empty kind of thing. Anyway, meteor requires a gold pickaxe or better to mine and touching it sets you on fire if you don't have an obsidian skull, so make sure you mine it carefully. Bombs also don't work anymore in 1.4 till after hard mode, so manual mining it is. Meteor heads are also pretty annoying, but it's nothing a wonderful terrarian like you can't handle. With meteor ore, you can then smelt meteor bars at a furnace, which allows you to make the meteor shot bullet our first piercing bullet. The meteor shot can either bounce or pierce a single enemy, kind of like the chlorified arrows, but without the smart targeting. The fact that these can pierce is a huge advantage, since it allows you to deal with goblin invasions super easily. Sometimes I wonder if the devs just overlooked the meteor shot when they made the meteor, post brain and eater of world. They probably just wanted to nerf the mages, but it kinda made gunners have a tough time with the bosses. Overall though, we still have the mini shark, which is still really strong, but I really wonder sometimes. These are a must have for pre hard mode and are arguably one of the most important and strongest ammos we have now. I mean actually these are the best that we have, there's literally nothing else pre hard mode. So mine up a couple of meteorites and go destroy every innocent wild creature there is. Once you've destroyed the wall of flesh with meteor shot bullets, which are really effective by the way, 
We are now in hard mode and have access to really busted ammo types. The first ammo I really love is the Crystal Bullet, one of the strongest early hard mode bullets out there. The Crystal Bullet can be crafted from Crystal Shards, which are found in the Hollowed Biome. You only need one Crystal Shard to make 100 Crystal Bullets, so it's really easy to amass thousands of these. Just note that you need a hard mode anvil to make these, so you'll need to do some hard mode mining beforehand. The Crystal Bullet shatters on impact with an enemy and then creates additional 2 shards on PC or 3 shards on consoles and mobile that deal 50% damage each. Eventually, consoles and all will have it changed to 2 shards, so I'll just proceed with that basis. This means that when you use something like a Mega Shard, tons and tons of additional shards will be created, dealing lots of extra damage. These bullets are really strong and are extremely accessible making them great contenders to take down mechanical bosses with. Crystal bullets are really great, and they are one of my favourite ammos in the entire game. Give them a try if you can, I really recommend them. Next, we have the Icor and Curse bullets, two really strong bullets with relatively high damage, and also some really sick bonus effects. Curse bullets are made from Curse flames, loot dropped from enemies in the underground corruption. When I say underground, it means the cavern layer, Confusing, I know, but Terraria has some pretty strange lingo. Anyway, the Curse Bullet has a high base damage of 12, and inflicts the Curse Flames debuff. This is a much stronger version of the On Fire or Frostburn debuff, and deals a pretty good chunk of damage over time. These are amazing for the Twins or Skeletron Prime, but are rather expensive compared to the Crystal ones. One Curse Flame nets you 150 Curse Bullets, but Curse Flames are a lot harder to get than Crystal Shards. I would recommend only using Curse Bullets for tougher enemies, so you don't have to farm too much. For example, Crystal Bullets are probably stronger for the Destroyer, because the Shattered Shards deal extra damage to its multiple segments. Curse Bullets are much better for single target damage, so it's more suited for the Twins. They're also good for when you just want to spray and pray because its damage over time can make up for bad accuracy, to a small extent at least. Overall, Curse Bullets are really strong and have one of the best damage in the game. Well recommended as well. Following this, we have the Icor Bullets, which has a base damage of 13 and inflicts the Icor debuff. The Icor Bullet is the Crimson equivalent of the Curse Bullet, and Icor reduces the defense stat of your enemies. One Icor similarly creates 150 Icor Bullets, so the same rationale with the Crystal Bullet and Destroyer applies here. Lots of people like Icor ones over the Cursed ones, but I'm honestly pretty neutral about them and just use whatever, because I don't really care. But it's true that Icor works really well for mechanical bosses because they have really high defense stats. Also, if you have a Corruption world, you can get Icor without making a new world and vice versa. You can simply visit the Dryad in a graveyard biome, which is made by placing down a couple of graves. She will then sell the seeds of the opposite world evil, which you can then use to corrupt a small segment of the cavern layer. In conclusion, both are amazing bullets and are super recommended. Next, after defeating at least one mechanical boss, we then have access to the high velocity bullet. These can be crafted using cogs bought from the Steampunker NPC. Since these can be bought, they're super easy to accumulate and are extremely accessible. The high velocity bullet has 11 base damage, and it's, well, high velocity. This is essentially similar to the Uzi, but for every gun. Even though the high velocity bullet doesn't have any extra special debuffs like the Icor or Cursed bullets, this one is really satisfying to use. The way that it sounds and how it looks is just great and the fact that it's high velocity also means that you have more room for error when aiming. It's so much easier to hit where you want using these bullets, which are great for agile bosses like Duke Fishron or the Empress of Light. It's actually really easy to hit stuff with guns in general, so these bullets just make it a cakewalk. So high velocity bullets are really solid, and I like using them for general use, since they are so easy to make and so fun to play with. But if you really don't want to aim, why not consider the Chlorophyte Bullet? Chlorophyte Bullets are made from Chlorophyte Bars, which can be mined in the jungle once you've defeated all three mechanical bosses. But do note that you need a Titanium or Adamantite Forge to smelt Chlorophyte, so make sure you go get one of those. If you don't know how, the wiki is your best friend. So, what's so good about Chlorophyte Bullets? 
well, they auto-aim for you, and you never ever have to stress over that ever again. These bullets work amazingly with the Mega Shark or the Chain Gun, and it makes bosses like Plantera or Duke Fishron a piece of cake. For Duke Fishron especially, these bullets are a lifesaver. But the downside is that Chlorophyte bullets only have 9 base damage, and are pretty expensive to craft and amass. They're just such a hassle to make and farm that I usually just use Crystal or High Velocity bullets instead. In addition, you have no control over what the bullet aims. For example, Chlorophyte bullets are amazing against Plantera, because all you need to do is circle around her and then she'll die. But if you notice, Chlorophyte bullets tend to focus on her tentacles first, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does make the fight more drawn out. Using traditional bullets means more direct damage with Plantera. At the end of the day, it's a trade-off, and it's up to you whether you think it's worth it or not to use them. They are definitely strong and convenient, but that's balanced nicely with its downsides. So try them out and decide later. Next, we have the Nano Bullets. These bullets are made with Nanite, but from the Cyborg NPC, who spawns after you beat Plantera. So once again, it's easy to make lots of Nano Bullets. These bullets have a base damage of 15, one of the highest in the game. They also bounce and can cause the confusion effect if it hits enemies. But in my opinion, they're kind of underwhelming. Sure, they are nice to use and are pretty fun, but they are kind of just a gimmick, I think. Nano bullets only deal two thirds of their damage after they bounce, so you'd rather hit the enemies directly anyway. The confusion effect is also not that useful, even though it does help if you're facing tough enemies like in the upgraded dungeon or during the lunar event. Overall, the Nano Bullet is a really solid bullet, but it's just not my cup of tea. The reason why I'm not a fan of the Nano Bullets is because I'd rather just use Venom Bullets, which are also accessible at the same time you can get Nano ones. Venom Bullets also have 15 base damage, but also inflict the Venom debuff, a really strong damage over time effect. Venom Bullets are crafted using Venom Fowls, which can be purchased from the Witch Doctor after Plantera is defeated. So as you can see, Venom Bullets are also very accessible and easy to craft. Perhaps I'm just someone who loves damage over gimmicky effects, which is why I prefer Venom ones over the Nano Bullets. I usually go for these, then just use them exclusively for almost everything, cause I'm pretty lazy to farm. I even use these for the Moon Lord for its high base damage alone. In some cases, I call all Crystal Bullets still do more effective damage per bullet, but if you're lazy, Venom is the way to go. Overall, just try both the Nano and Venom bullets, and take your pick afterwards. But it's always Venom for me. Before we move on to the most broken bullet in the game, an honourable mention goes to the Endless Musket Pouch. This wonderful ammo can be crafted at a Crystal Ball, which is sold by the Wizard NPC in Hard Mode. You can combine 4 stacks of Musket Balls into the Endless Musket Pouch, which gives you infinite basic ammo. This is a great quality of life item, and you don't ever have to worry about ammo in your everyday use. But just keep in mind that they are merely musket balls, so no fancy effects there. But if you're using something like the Onyx Blaster, that doesn't even matter that much, since the extra Onyx Blast destroys everything anyway. Compared to the Endless Quiver for bows, the Endless Musket Pouch is a little more limited, since few guns transform bullets into special projectiles. It just doesn't have the same utility that the Quiver can provide. Overall though, I still recommend making one, because it is pretty annoying to constantly restock sometimes. Lastly, we have the Luminite Bullets. These are accessible after you beat the Moon Lord, and can be made from Luminite Bars at an Ancient Manipulator. These crazy bullets have 20 base damage, and can pierce up to a whopping 50 enemies. Although each enemy pierce does reduce the subsequent damage by 4%. The mechanics behind the Luminite bullet also prevents enemies from getting invincibility frames, so it really is the ultimate bullet. If you have the STMG and Luminite bullets, nothing can ever stand in your way ever again. These are absolutely bonkers, and should definitely be used if you can. The only annoying thing is that you need to farm the Moon Lord to get more Luminite, but hey, if you are ready at the end game, you can do whatever you want. Hopefully, this video provides the necessary information for you to become the best gunslinger Terraria has ever seen. Just remember that my recommendations are not foolproof or flawless, 
so just try them all out and use what you enjoy. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too for more Terraria guides and other stuff. Follow me on social media and join the Discord server too if you want to say hi. This has been Zuzucorn. Have a nice day and have a great week ahead. Bye bye.